Now, um, you must keep in mind, Obama does not believe in taking any steps back. He doesn't move backwards. Oh, Mark, but he agreed on the tax issue. He didn't move backward. He's saving that baby up for Election Day. Oh, yes. Class warfare. It was just a little too early to do him any good. So he put it off for a couple of years. And the Republicans helped him out. But at the White House today, Obama revealed himself yet again. Now, keep in mind, Barack Obama is bought and paid for by the unions, particularly the public sector unions. Let me repeat that. He's bought and paid for. So we don't need any lectures from a politician who is bought and paid for by the very entities like the NEA that are breaking our backs. Obama treats some citizens one way and some citizens another way, depending on how useful they are to him. So here he is at the White House trying to turn this issue of the bankruptcy of towns and states and the massive burden this is all placing on taxpayers, how he's trying to turn this into a class warfare, rich versus poor, yet again. Cut two, go. So, yes, we need a conversation about pensions and Medicare and Medicaid and other promises that we've made as a nation. And those will be tough conversations, but necessary conversations. As we make these decisions about our budget going forward, though, I believe that everyone should be at the table and that the concept of shared sacrifice should prevail. If all the pain is borne by only one group, whether it's workers or seniors or the poor, while the wealthiest among us get to keep or get more tax breaks, we're not doing the right thing. I think that's something the Democrats and Republicans should be able to agree on. Let me ask you folks a question. When you look at your property tax bill on your home, are you thinking soak the rich, or are you thinking you're being soaked? by people who get paid more than you do. Let me ask you another question. When you oppose Obamacare, do you oppose it because you think the rich are getting away with something? Or do you oppose it because you think it's going to be detrimental to you and your family, both financially and medically? Notice how he tries, like a Marxist, to twist all this stuff into class warfare, turning citizen against citizen. When what he's really doing is trying to gobble up as much liberty and as much of your resources as possible while your attention is diverted, he hopes hating somebody or being jealous of somebody. Tell me, what is the biggest monopoly in this country? Well, it be the federal government, the vertical and horizontal monopoly. What entity has the most power in this government? Well, it be in the country. Well, it be the federal government. What entity has the most influence on your life? I'm not talking from a faith point of view. I'm talking from a, a practical point of view in terms of uh, your daily life, who's interfering with it, who's trying to control you. That would be the federal government. So we're supposed to look at this one over here and that one over there, look over the hill at that one, look behind you. Everybody's out to screw you. In the meantime, the person who's trying to control you and coerce you and repress you is the president. It's the president. He says we need to have a conversation about Medicare and Medicaid. Has he started a conversation about Medicare and Medicaid? doesn't give a damn. No. He's busy building monuments, massive entitlement monuments. He's not going to look back. He's not interested in administering a damn thing. He's not interested in reforming a damn thing. He's transforming. Transforming. And he's going to keep giving you the rich versus poor class warfare claptrap because he doesn't know anything else. And because it's been effective for them in the past. He looks at Wisconsin. The battle going on between public sector unions and now private unions jumping in and the taxpayers. And he loves it. He loves it. The more chaos, the better. The more anarchy, the better. Well, everybody's distracted and fighting with each other. He's on his move. And so we have this nonsense about, oh, I'm going to give you more flexibility on Obamacare. When, in fact, what he's pushing is blue state governors, like the idiot in Maryland, the idiot in Massachusetts, the idiots in Vermont and so forth, to take the ball and run with it and lurch even further and further left to backdoor single payer while he's got the House of Representatives all clogged up. This is a man who is not competent, but strategic. You don't have to be bright to be a leftist. You're constantly, constantly at war with society and constantly on the move, so it's harder and harder to pin down what you're doing and keep so many balls in the air that your opponents are busy trying to catch one while you throw another one up. You're not a builder. You're a destroyer. So Obama talks and talks about the wealthiest this and the richest that, while he flies in a trainer from Chicago, because apparently there aren't any good ones on the East Coast. He flies in a, 
a pizza chef because apparently there isn't any pizza on the East Coast. Not to his liking. They hire uh, a taxpayer expense, some stylist or whatever, for the first lady. While the rest of us, of course, are supposed to roll back our expectations. While we have 20% unemployment and underemployment in this country, people are trying to hold on. He's never had it so well. He shows no humility. Even when he talks about compassion, he sounds like he's without compassion. That's what we're dealing with here. You don't agree with me? Most of you know I'm exactly right. All right, let's take a few calls here. Let us go to William in Los Angeles, the great KBC. Go. Hey, Mark. Thank you for having me. I, I love your show, and I'm a big listener, and uh, really um, thank you for all your work. And, thank you. Um, I, I have one comment. I was in a restaurant um, about a month and a half ago, and they had a magazine, and it actually spelled out the individual implications that Obamacare had with our personal liberties and freedoms. It actually spelled it out, like, you know, forced immunization and things like that. And I'm, my question to you is, why isn't uh, our conservative media pushing the actual specific points that will, I think, reach across the board, even to uh, uh, the middle and the liberals that don't want Because, William, the problem isn't that the vast majority of Americans need convincing that this is a bad idea. Every poll I've seen says most Americans think it is a bad idea. We're at the point now of not having to convince people, but having to figure out how to stop a rogue administration from instituting something that people do not want. So I don't... He's gone. I don't know why, but... So it's not like we have to keep convincing people, although I talk about it frequently. We have to figure out a strategy to stop it. Now, we lawyers have figured out some ways to fight it, and you can see what's going on there. And we need to continue to organize at the grassroots level through the Tea Party and other, organiza or, uh, excuse me, other organizations to stop it. We need to continue to press Republicans in Congress to push for defunding wherever they can. So it's not a question of revealing that it's a bad thing. We know it's a bad thing. We just have to stop it. Stop it or it's going to stop us. Now, I said earlier, I'm sick and tired of these Republicans who, are, who, f who feel the need to acknowledge the wonderment of this administration and the First Lady and the President. I mean, they don't have to be rude. I get that. But why do they think they always have to smile and wave rather than tell the truth? And I'm even talking about these guys that supposedly are plain speaking. I mean, you can look into the character of the people in the White House and you can see that it's a problem. What am I talking about? We have Mrs. Obama... The first lady out there lecturing us about what we should and should need and our children should and should need. And she's caught for the 25th time with these massive meals with massive calorie counts that she, through our tax dollars, is feeding people. WhiteHouseDossier.com, First Lady Michelle Obama, Sunday night, stuffed about 2,200 calories worth of dinner into the nation's governors, hosting a White House bash that pulled few punch on the fattening front, despite her profile as the leader of a national crusade to trim the, weight list, the weight waistlines of the country's youth. President Obama is meeting with the governors from both parties at the White House. Sunday night's dinner was a kind of welcoming gala, provided enough calories for an entire day's worth of eating. The meal follows a recent state dinner for Chinese President Hu Jintao, which probably forced him to put away 20 900 calories and a Super Bowl party where guests had access to each totaling 3,600 calories. Mrs. Obama's leading the Let's Move campaign, which might also be known as the Do As I Say, Not As I Do campaign to reduce child obesity. And the First Lady has not been shy about demonstrating her contention that healthy eating needs to be balanced by some old-fashioned cheating. She was seen last weekend in Colorado chowing on a buffalo rib and has been photographed savoring cones and Sundays at ice cream shops from Panama City, Florida, to Marbella, Spain. Sunday, she served the governor's beef instead of chicken, threw in some fattening uh, plantain chips, even though she already had a side of black beans and rice for them, added an unnecessary dollop of honey to the tropical fruit dish, and dropped the coconut sherbet, otherwise not a bad dessert choice, into a chocolate shell. 2,200 calories. And so, on... Uh, Fox News Sunday, Chris Wallace brings this up, brings it up to Chris Christie and Mike Huckabee, both of whom want to be president. Look, don't, they may not run now, but they want to be president. Otherwise, the massive publicity push, that doesn't just happen. You have staff that pushes that. 
Christy, I think it's a really good goal to encourage kids to eat better. Actually, he said it on Face the Nation, CBS. Nobody watches that. You'll know I've struggled with my weight for 30 years, and it's a struggle. If a kid can avoid that in his adult years or her adult years, more power to them. I think the First Lady's speaking out well. Asked about criticism of Mrs. Obama, Christie said, I think it's unnecessary, and he made a point of saying that he did not want the government telling people what to eat. But I think Mrs. Obama being out there, encouraging people in a positive way to eat well and exercise and be healthy, I don't have a problem with that. Well, Governor, that's not what she's doing. That's part of what she's doing. And I'm going to educate you when we come back so you'll know what people are complaining about and you'll be encumbered with the facts before you pop off. And by the way, the first to call on the question of federal spending and state spending and local spending was no single politician. It was the Tea Party movement. The Tea Party movement that elected McDonnell of Virginia, Christie of New Jersey, and Brown of Massachusetts lest we forget. And I have to say, I'm not endorsing anybody. I'm not even close to endorsing anybody. Not that anybody cares if I endorse anybody. But while some of these Republicans are moving away from the Tea Party, some are moving closer. One of the ones who's moving closer is Polenti, who spoke in Phoenix to a Tea Party rally, which I was invited to keynote, but I just couldn't do it, couldn't get away. And I really liked what he said. So I'm paying attention to these candidates who are given second and third tier by the lib media and some of the inside the Beltway conservative media. I don't know. I didn't say I'm endorsing. I'm not endorsing anybody, but I'm going to start to pay a little more attention. Now, I just use that segment to do that. But in the next segment, I want to tell you exactly what Michelle Obama is doing. And it's not just speaking out on child obesity. It is using her position and the instrumentalities of government to intimidate we don't support that, do we, Republican governors? We'll be right back. Yeah, it's very troubling to me. A lot of these commentators now on cable, they're missing Obama's Obama's sleazy ploy. But you're not, because we discussed it. Now, Michelle Obama, see, the question on the Sunday show about, do you agree with Palin and Limbaugh and so forth, criticizing the first lady on this issue of obesity in which he's told, no, no, of course, I don't have anything wrong with it. What's the problem? So we have a question and answer that have nothing to do with reality. The question has nothing to do with reality, and the answer is uninformed. And I pointed this out. It's right there in the New York Slimes. A team of advisors, February 6th, to Mrs. Obama has been holding private talks over the past year with the National Restaurant Association, In a bid to get restaurants to adopt her goals of smaller portions and children's meals that include healthy offerings like carrot, apple slices, milk instead of french fries and soda, according to the White House and industry officials. What the hell business is it of the White House, of an unelected first lady, to be pulling in the National Restaurant Associations, the restaurant trade group, and to be telling them anything? The discussions are preliminary. Oh, no, they're not. She's putting the arm on them. It's obvious. They're nowhere near an agreement. An agreement? They're in a negotiation? Like the one Mrs. Obama announced recently with Walmart? Oh, she's just saying we need to, we need to reduce the weight of children. No, she's not just saying anything. Mrs. Obama will begin a three-day publicity blitz. The spotlight, let's move. She'll introduce a public service announcement. But if she uses her public form to persuade children to eat healthier and exercise more, Mrs. Obama and her team are also quietly pressing the levers of industry and government. Got that? Pressing the levers of industry and government. Really? Over the past year, she's become involved in many aspects of the nation's dietary habits, exerting her influence over nutrition policy. I got one son. He's 19, a daughter who's 22. Let me tell you something, Mrs. Obama. They don't give a damn what you say about nutrition. I have my discussions with them. You are irrelevant. And that's the truth. And it's the truth in 99% of the families on the face of this country. We'll be right back.